which how you'll identify that muscle the by direction. the orientation of the fibers, which is the which is the which is vertical, vertical right? Yes. In semispinous capillaries. Then next fibers that you see here, these are the fibers of the splenius capitis. First is semisplenius, which is vertical, and then oblique fibers which run across from anterior to I mean from superior to inferior in oblique direction. Those are the fibers of the splenius capitis. Okay. Then next muscle that you see here and which is you know crossed over by the accessory nerve. This is the accessory nerve. See, this is the accessory nerve and it is going to supply it is going to supply the the trapezius muscle it has already supplied the trapezius this is the direction of the accessory nerve so first while underlying the sternocleidomastoid it will supply the this muscle and then it will cross the posterior triangle to reach the trapezius muscle all right this is the accessory nerve and underlying the trapezius in the accessory nerve which muscle you are going to see you see the levator scapsi, right? So this is a way of identifying the, the accessory nerve. To confirm the accessory nerve, there are many proprioceptive branches. You have to look for the, the nerve that is actually crossing the, the and which is lying over the levator scapsi muscle. And then here there are more nerves that you can see besides accessory nerve. On the middle of the posterior border, what are the cutaneous nerves that, that you are going to see? You will see the the supraclavicular nerve that supplies the Classical. lower part of the yeah, neck. Yeah. neck. All right. Then you'll see the great auricular nerve. This is the great auricular nerve, and to the towards the ear. Mm -hmm. And then you'll see the the lesser yes, occipital nerve. Yeah. Here, this lesser occipital nerve is quite small. We'll try to find it in some other uh, yes, in some other category. More mm -hmm. obvious. Where it is more on this. Then uh, the, the transverse cervical nerve is missing from here. It is broken. And again, we'll see it in some other. So here you have the, the levator scapuli muscle. Then down the levator scapuli muscle, this is the scalenus. Here you'll have the scalenus posterior. Then more anteriorly, you'll have the scalenus medius, which is not very obvious in this. You'll see in other cadaver. All right, so these are the different muscles which are present in the floor of the posterior triangle. Now, look in, look at the anterior triangle in this cadaver. Mm -hmm. It is formed by the sternocleidomastoid, mm -hmm. the anterior median line, and the lower bottom of the mandible. All right, so this is what? This is the anterior, anterior triangle. triangle. And the anterior triangle is further subdivided into, into different triangles. Mm -hmm. So here, the triangle bounded by the sternocleidomastoid, the omohyoid over here, okay, the anti-median line. This is called as the muscular triangle. What do you call it? You call it muscular triangle. All right. So this muscular triangle, it has. I told you about the floor of this triangle. I told you about the right the previous. Uh, but what things that can be seen here? That's what I'm showing you. So here, this is the sternohyoid muscle. The muscle that you see here is the sternohyoid muscle. And deep to the sternohyoid muscle, you will find the sternothyroid muscle. Right? Deep to this muscle, you will not break it. I mean, you will not displace it, otherwise it will get damaged. I will show you in some other category. So this is what? This is the sternohyoid muscle, right? But the deeper muscles are going to be sternothyroid, and you can also see the thyroid muscle if provided you remove this muscle, which is overlapping the these these two deeper muscles. The floor force is going to be formed by the viscera, which is the larynx and the trachea. Okay. Now look at this. Uh, this here you have the submental triangle. This is the submental triangle, which is bounded by the anterior belly of digastric. This is the anterior belly of digastric, you can see. And here you have the, the hyoid bone, and then this is the anterior median line. And all right, so the floor of this triangle, the floor of this triangle is formed by the myelohyoid muscle. See, the preference is given to the eyes, not to the camera. Okay. You have a very big 
Okay, so uh, I think one recording is enough. He'll load it on the Facebook, on the hard disk, on the computer, and then you can take it from there. Just, just keep your. There's no time to take it because, like, there will be the new term after the e drive. He will put the. Put a group. Or I'll put it on the. And moreover, in the midterm examination, you'll not be, you know, given this cadaver. You'll be given the slides. Uh -huh. uh -huh. All right. Sorry. But these things are going to come up in the in the oral examinations. And for sure, these things are going to be included. So you must not skip. Try to skip this. Otherwise, you lose the marks. Now, next thing is. The, here you have the myelohyoid muscle, mm -hmm. and the myelohyoid muscle actually forms the floor of okay. the submental yes. triangle. And what do you have in this triangle? Anyone can tell me? The submental No, the floor is is myelohyoid. The genohyoid is deep, so it cannot form the floor. Floor is already formed by the myelohyoid muscle. Is the border, all right? But I'm asking you the contents of the triangle, of this triangle. Myelohyoid nerve. Submental lymph nodes. Submental lymph nodes and the beginning of the anterior jugular vein. Right? Anterior jugular vein. So these are the two things which are present. So this is the anterior pelvic digastric. Then behind this is the posterior pelvic digastric. All right. And severely you have the lower border of mandible. And what kind of triangle is this? Submandibular sub triangle. And you know what the things are there. But what you can see in this particular category is a big submandibular gland. You can see the facial artery. You can see the facial vein. All right. But the other things are not possible to appreciate in this, in this uh, triangle. Over the here, posteriorly, you find the hyoglossus muscle and the myelohyoid muscle forming the floor of the triangle. Uh, so next triangle, uh, which is bounded by the sternocleidomastoid, anterior border, mm -hmm. omohyoid, and the posterior pelvic digastric. This particular triangle is called as the carotid triangle. Right, so I may put a pointer here and ask you which triangle is this. Carotid. All right. So you'll say carotid triangle. Then you must also know the contents of the triangle. Carotid. I may ask you the contents of the triangle. Mm -hmm. All right. So make sure that you know the contents like you have the uh, you know quiz examination practical exam. mm -hmm. no question was like you know direct labeling but it was uh, atta ligaments attached to this process and this is how the things were so just try to remember the contents of each triangle all right now <clears throat> any other category where we can see the cutaneous in a better way. So here, some some of the things that are viewed better. If you look in this cadaver, the same things, but what extra thing is here is is the. You have the over the levator scapula. This is the levator scapula muscle, and over the levator scapula, you can see the the accessory nerve. All right. Then there are other nerves which are crossing the posterior triangle. Those are actually the the proprioceptive branches. All right, mm -hmm. which are going to supply the trapezius muscle. And is that clear to you? The nerve which is over the over over the levator scapula muscle will be the accessory nerve. All right. Now, next thing uh, here you can see this is the this muscle that which I am holding with my forceps. Here, this will be the this is the this is the scalenus posterior muscle. Right. Then you have the scalenus medius, and in front of the scalenus medius, you can see the emerging branches of the cervical plexus. Okay. So this nerve is very obvious. Which what nerve is this? This is the. Supra scapular, supra clavicular. Some people have written down subclavicular. Some have said, this. I mean, in the quiz, mm -hmm. they have written it by different names. Scapular and clavicular. Huh? 
They confuse you. So here, so here, even like instead of like writing down supra, they have written sub. All right. So that has resulted in loss of marks. This is what this is the supra clavicular nerve. Here you have the transverse cervical nerve. This is the transverse cervical nerve, and you can see here this is the great auricular nerve. And over here you have the suprasacral nerve. Right, and uh, an anesthetic injection applied here will result in a block anesthesia of the neck. And I have shown you the shaded portion in the lecture. Okay. Now again, the this is the, gland. the big submandibular gland here. So the entire muscle that you see here, actually, this is sternum, sternum, but this has been broken in the middle, and you may be confused with this breaking of the fibers. But the whole thing is the sternum. This is the homo heart muscle. All right. Now. It was supposed to be external jugular vein, which was going to join the, which was going to join the, join the subclavian vein, but it's broken here. Okay. So anyway, now next thing is, the, let's see the superficial things first. Then. Sir, couldn't see the these scalene muscles. Scalene muscles. Yeah. See, really. It's scalene muscle. See, if you look at this, this is these are the fibers of the splenius capitis. Lower down here, this is the these are this is the elevator scapuli muscle. Then after this elevator scapuli, here this is muscle you have the the scalenus posterior. Then here you have the scalenus medius. All right. Now immediately in front of the scalenus medius, you can see the emerging branches of the cervical plexus, the cutaneous branches of cervical plexus. All right. So this is what, this is a confirmatory confirmation that the scalenus the, uh, the muscle behind the emerging branches is the scalenus medius. So what was the first one? And here, more anteriorly, you will find this one, this muscle, actually, which is not a part of the posterior triangle. This is the scalenus anterior. anterior. All right. This is the scalenus anterior muscle. What was the first one? The first one. Which one? Before levator scapula. Before levator scapula, this is the splenius capitis. Splenius at the scapula. top of the, at the apex of the triangle, this is the semi S splenius semi splenius capitis. The same thing is Difference. <laughs> <laughs> All right, try to see. You can stand on the uh, stools, not a problem. Okay, so in this case, the sternocleidomastoid has been has been sectioned, and once it has been sectioned, you can see the the structures in of carotid sheath. So this is the omohyoid, and this omohyoid has a superior belly. Then it has the intermediate tendon, and lower down you can see the inferior belly. All right, so inferior belly, intermediate tendon, and the superior belly. All right, let's remove it and see what are the things that we can see deeper. Now here you can see the the. You can see what you can see the the contents of the carotid sheath because carotid sheath has been removed. So you you can see this is the internal jugular vein. 
Okay, the carrot, I uh, said, carrot cheese has been removed. Yes. So, uh, so here this is what this is yeah. Yeah. and it has also been sectioned. So a part of the segment has been removed. There's a lower part of the. This is the lower part of the of the internal jugular vein, right? Here, this is the upper, and this portion has been has been removed. A segment of the internal jugular vein has been. Removed. Now, what this artery should be? Mm. Come, come, this should be the common. Yeah. Higher up, the, the, the internal carotid artery and the external carotid artery. Okay. This is the biggest. So here, this is this particular artery, this one. All right, internal is the external carotid. Behind this will be the internal carotid. All right. So this this artery, which which is like, which I am showing you now, this is the external carotid artery. You can see that there are emerging branches from this particular artery. Okay, so this is external carotid. Behind it, it will be the behind it, it will be the internal. Behind it, behind the external will be the internal. Somewhere here. All right. Now, uh, what else is there in the carotid sheath? You have the vagus nerve, right? You have the vagus nerve in the carotid sheath. So this is the vagus nerve. This is what? Vagus. This is the vagus. Nerve. This nerve is the vagus nerve. Okay, and as a something which is embedded in the carotid sheath is ansa cervicalis. So here, this is the loop of ansa cervicalis. Okay, this is the loop of ansa cervicalis. You can see here, this is the inferior root or the descendant cervicalis, and this is the this is the descendant hypoglossi. All right. So if you trace the descendant hypoglossi. It will be connected to which nerve? Uh, uh, connected to the, the uh, hypoglossal uh, nerve. Yeah. It will be connected to the hypoglossal nerve. The name says so, so. If you trace it upwards, you will come across the. You will come across the, the, the hypoglossal nerve. <coughs> now, uh, ansa cervicalis. You can also see it is giving off a branch. To is giving off a branch to to sternohyoid muscle. This is a branch to the sternohyoid muscle. Okay. All right. Then uh, you remember there was a nerve which was placed anterior, anteriorly on the scalenus anterior muscle, which was descending. I think I gave a question in one of the sections. Which was lying anteriorly, which is descending in front of the. Uh, Greater orbit. No. no, from the phrenic. 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 Phrenic now descends on the anterior surface of the scalenus anterior. Yes. So here, this is the scalenus anterior muscle, right? This is what? This is the scalenus anterior muscle, and descending on its surface, on its anterior surface, is the phrenic. This is the phrenic nerve. Okay, this is the phrenic nerve, and this is the vagus. So vagus will be descending along with the vessels but the the phrenic nerve will be descending into separately overlying the overlying the scalenus anterior muscle so this muscle that i am showing you right now this is the scalenus anterior muscle behind this scalenus anterior will be so i am putting this forcep in between scalenus anterior and scalenus medius okay so behind the muscle which i am pushing is medius and clearly the muscle i am pushing is this anterior okay now uh, which is this muscle can anyone tell me? Yeah. or which Sternal is this hyoid. this is muscle no thyroid no thyroid is deep anyone who can tell me this muscle what is the that is actually you have to see it yeah i can't only it. only if you can if you will see it properly you'll be able to tell the name of this muscle otherwise you'll make mistakes maybe these people have turned like answered correctly maybe it may be sternohyoid maybe but anyone with a different answer what's your i guess maybe sternohyoid how do you say that? Because the origin is below the 
Platysma has been removed once you have removed the deep cervical fascia. Only deep cervical fascia removal will show you all these things. Is there a thyroid? No, no. Quickly tell me that you are... This is the same muscle. This muscle and this muscle are the same. Sternocleidomastoid. Sternocleidomastoid. This is the easiest muscle, the sternocleidomastoid. Which has a superficial, I mean, which has two heads. One head is attached to the sternum. Right, and the other head is attached to the clavicle. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so this is what you were saying: sterno, sterno, hyoid. And you can see the attachment is going deep to the deep to the sternum. All right, it's going on the on the posterior surface of the sternum, deep. Okay, here you have the clavicle, and in the center you have the sternum. So, which is this muscle? This is the sternum, hyoid. Okay. Deep to the sternohyoid, yeah, here thyroid. this is the sternothyroid. And you can see the sternothyroid has been cut, has been sectioned, and this is the other end which is attached to the oblique line. Okay, so this is the sterno, sternothyroid, and this is also sternothyroid. All right, and in its upper part, the brown muscle fibers that you see here, these brown muscle fibers, this is the thyrohyoid. Thyroid. All right. So here you have the oblique line. Sternothyroid. No, sorry. Thyroid. Below is the sternum. No. Come. And here you can see this is the internal jugular vein. Internal jugular vein. Yes. Joining the subclavian vein. Vein. And here you have the brachiocephalic. Okay. So internal jugular plus. The subclavian merging to form, merging to form the breaking cephalic. Okay, now the last thing of the day. Here you can also see, I mean, more clearly. You can find like different nerves here. This is the, here you have the, the digastric muscle. You can see this is the anterior belly, the posterior belly, intermediate tendon. And then you have the you have the stylo hyoid muscles here. All right. Now this is the this is the emerging brachial plexus, trunks of brachial plexus. Anterior to this brachial plexus, this one is the scalenus anterior muscle. Behind is the scalenus medius. Okay. And everything is disturbed. So maybe the supraclavicular nerve. Here you have the vagus nerve. All right. Then. Hmm? This, is the this, this is the levator scapula. This is the internal jugular vein. Not much difference. Mm -hmm. 
All right, quite, quite now. See, this is the from here. This is all the conker, and the, and there's a gap between the conker and the auditory tube. So here you'll have the nasal septum, right? This is the end of the nasal cavity and the beginning of the nasopharynx. End of nasal cavity, beginning of nasopharynx. Now, in this nasopharynx, as I've shown you the lateral wall, which shows the opening of the auditory tube. Surrounding the opening is the tubal elevation. And extending from the tubal elevation down is the salpingopharyngeal fold. All right. Behind the salpingopharyngeal fold, here you have the, the pharyngeal recess. This is called as the pharyngeal recess. Okay. In its roof, you had the pharyngeal tonsils. All right. You had the pharyngeal tonsils. Then, this is the portion which is the oropharyngeal isthmus. All right. So opposite the oropharyngeal isthmus, you have the oropharynx. Right. Then lower down on the sides you have the vallecula, in the center you have the median glossoepiglottic fold. So this depression is the vallecula. This fossa is the vallecula. Okay. And uh, here you can see this uh, posterior third of the tongue. This is the lingual tonsil. All right. Palatine tonsil is hidden here. The palatine tonsil will be between the palatophalangeal fold and palatoglossal fold. So you will find the, the palatine tonsil laterally. Now uh, here opposite the laryngeal inlet starting from the level of the mm -hmm. preglottis to the, the uh, lower border to the, the lower border of the cricoid cartilage. All right. So here this is the arch of the cricoid cartilage and behind it is the this is the posterior lamina of the this is the lamina of the cricoid cartilage. Okay. The thing which I'm just making creating a sound is is the lamina of the cricoid cartilage. So this is the end of the laryngopharynx. Okay, this is the extent of the laryngopharynx. And on the side of the laryngopharynx, when I'm trying to push this corset, here this is the this is the pyriform fossa. Right, this is what? This is the pyriform fossa. This depth is the pyriform fossa. Right? This depth is what? Pyriform fossa. Is that clear to you? The same thing I am not able to do here because it is not deep. I will not be able to do the same thing here. But I am able to completely, you know, I am not for for forcing the tip of my fossa. It is freely going. Right? It, and it is not getting any obstruction on it. This is, it, it shows that the tip is in the fossa. And this is what? This is the pyriform fossa. Now, next thing is the laryngeal cavity. Okay? So, this is what? This is the airy epiglottic fold. You can see the small tubercles, one and two. This is, these two tubercles, inferiorly is the corniculate tubercle, and superiorly you have this small tubercle. This is the cuneiform tubercle. All right? Now, uh, here you have two folds in the cavity. The, this, this is the upper fold and this is the lower fold. So, upper fold is the false vocal cord and the lower fold is the true vocal cords. Right? So, here all this space where I am putting the forceps is, is the vestibule. Is the vestibule. Below the false vocal cord here you have the infraglottic cavity. All right? And between the two true and false vocal cords, this space that you see here, the, this is the ventricle. All right, this is what? The this is the ventricle. And here you have the vallecula. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the vestibule and this is the ventricle. This is, the, is, above this is the vestibule. Okay. Yes. And if there is an aller allergic angioedema, uh, uh, angioedema is resulting from a hypersensitivity reaction, then it is this vestibule which is which is like inflamed, I mean which is inflamed and which is going to block the block the laryngeal cavity, which is going to block the airway, I should say. So this is the this is the infraglottic cavity up to this level. 
-hmm. You can see this is all. You can see the the cartilage. This is all required cartilage. This is all required cartilage. Starting from here. Can you hear the sound? Which is there is space. You see uh, some something uh, striking something solid. Bony. All right. This is all pre-quiet cartilage. This is the arch, and here you have the lamina. Mm -hmm. So it is until this level you have the infraglottic cavity, starting from here, starting from here. All right. Uh, that's all I think. Which is clear. You can have a better view of some true and false vocal folds. Uh, here, this is a good salping of pharyngeal fold. This is a good salping of pharyngeal fold, and here you can see this is the this is the this is the true vocal cord, and here you have the false vocal cord, and this is the ventricle upper vestibule. Upper here you have the infraglottic. Where is the piriform fossa? Piriform fossa will be over here. This is the piriform fossa. This is the piriform fossa. This one is the vestibule, and here this is the vestibule, and here I'm. Putting the force through the laryngeal inlet into the into the vestibule, mm -hmm. and where the level of the tip is, and the, the false uh, vocal. Look the, the, the here you have the valley. This is salping of pharyngeal fold. This is the salping of pharyngeal fold, and behind the salping of pharyngeal fold you have the pharyngeal recess. Here you'll have the pharyngeal tonsil. On the roof you'll have the pharyngeal tonsil. Here you'll have the salping. Here you'll have the tubal tonsil. Then over here you'll have the here you have the here you have the palatine tonsil. All right. Lingual tonsil. You can see this is the foramen cecum, mm -hmm. right? And this is the lingual tonsil. So Walder's ring is one, two, right? Three, four, and then like. Complete the, the surface. Tubal elevation is also we can consider as tonsil. No, no. Tubal elevation is the elevation over the mucosa because, because of, of the, the underlying, tonsil. underlying eustachian tube, underlying the, the the yes, the lateral end of the eustachian tube. All right. So this underlying the mucosa is the submucosa, and yes. that submucosa is filled up with with the Lymphoid follicles, which is called as the tubal tonsil, mm -hmm. and you can see if, if the tubal tonsil is enlarged, mm -hmm. what is going to happen? It is going to block the auditory tube, and when it's going to block the auditory tube. Because uh, over the time, there will be, be a pressure difference between the tympanic cavity and the outside environment. Mm -hmm. the tympanic cavity will have a reduced pressure because of the absorption of air from the mucosa in the tympanic cavity, and Imbalance in pressure will create what? It will create the stretching, the uh -huh. stretching of eardrum, the eardrum, tympanic membrane, mm -hmm. which is going to cause pain, pain. resulting pain. And then, because of the reduced 